Etzel, I'm going to give you the existence, the reality of parapsychology and, and, and psi uh, um, uh, activities. Um, I don't totally in the real world, but in this, this, this time I, I want to uh, stipulate that it exists. Mm -hmm. And if it exists, what are the implications for the nature of consciousness? Well, I would say the implications are not any less possible uh, or not any less bizarre than the implications that you get from modern physics from the 20th century onwards, which is what typically critics don't talk about. They say, oh, parapsychological phenomena are impossible, they violate the laws of physics, they go against what we know about time and space. And if they just read about quantum mechanics, they would know that some of the foundational figures said there is no such thing as objects, there is no such thing as space or time, even though we may experience it that way, that's not how it is. So in parapsychology, what I would say, and um, you may uh, follow, is what, what parapsychology, I think, uh, can or uh, seems to, to show is that it is consistent with at least the, the interpretation of a number of quantum mechanics authors. I'm not saying that quantum mechanics explains it, but parapsychological phenomena are consistent with the notion that space, time, object as isolated things are not there at the bottom of existence. Okay, so even if that were the case, and I think that's a little controversial even in quantum physics how that works, no. but let, let's, let's give you now both the existence of parapsychology and its consistency with modern uh, you know, 20th century on physics in terms mm -hmm. of the, the uncertainties of space and time, et cetera. Again, what does that imply about the fundamental nature of consciousness? Let me tie it into the notion that other states of consciousness or uh, alternate states of consciousness give us a different perspective on another side of consciousness. And here what I would like to refer to is the kind of experience and noetic sense that people who have mystical experiences report. When they do, and it can happen spontaneously, or when a person is about to die, or when a person has a near-death experience, or when it happens in the midst of a psychedelic trip, or a hypnotic experience, or a meditation experience, is that people suddenly feel there is no sense of time here. Yeah. I am connected with everything. And that sort of immediate apprehension it's very consistent, and even if you were not to buy and say, well, that's psychology, it's not physics, but I would say, why do we have those experiences? If you want to be materialist, why do we have alternate states, and why do we have those alternate states that give us that view of reality? One would be, well, maybe you are deluded, but people are consistently deluded, and after they have had those experiences, they become better people. Most of the people who have mystical experiences become more compassionate, more effective at what they do. They care more about the environment, more about their brethren, the other human beings and non-human beings. Look, that's fine. That's wonderful for society, and I agree that that's better. But the fact that it's better has no reflection on what the reality is because reality is not dependent upon the consequence of its of its uh, of, of the action. So, it, it, to say that a mystical experience makes better people, if that's true, that's wonderful, and that's wonderful for them, yeah. and wonderful for society. But that has zero, in my opinion, yeah. zero um, influence on what I believe to be fundamental reality. The fact that it's better, it, because if parapsychologists really and made them all worse, made them yeah. all bad people, um, mm -hmm. that that still could mean something about the nature of consciousness. Except what I would say is that you say you think you know what reality is. I would say I have no idea ultimately what it is. And that is what the thought of many people, philosophers from antiquity, contemporary physicists ended up arriving to. That we have a very slanted, limited view of reality. Oh. 
Okay, Go so ahead. okay, if, if, if uh, I agree with you there too, but then what does con how does consciousness play a role here? If parapsychology is real, if we have no sense of what ultimate reality is, mm -hmm. if space and time are, diff are, are in reality different than what we perceive it. Correct. Okay, given all of that, what is consciousness then? What 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 richness do we learn about consciousness from those premises? What I would say is that it tells us that consciousness has many different alternate or perspectives with which it can have a sense of different aspects of reality. Okay. And one of them is that in some way at the bottom we are interconnected, that time and space as we experience it in the ordinary typical state is one way of experiencing, not the only way, not the real way, but one way, so that there is not one single valid perspective on reality, but multiple. Of course, there are many others that are wrong. I'm going to concede that easily. <laughs> it would be crazy to say that, yeah, right, you know, right. whatever you experience is fine. I don't believe that for a second. But at the same time, I would say what some perspectives are given to us in those alternate states are both A, consistent with more contemporary physics, and B, make people better, and C, I do not see how you can explain them away using evolutionarily uh, explanations or things of that sort. Why do we have near-death experiences? Regardless of whether they have to do with death or not, which I do not think they have to do with death specifically, I think they have more to do with a way of apprehending reality. Why do we have these aspects? And I think it has to do with consciousness being broader, having multifaceted, kaleidoscopic view ways of relating so, so to the So each of these different world. things are uh, an enriching of what consciousness is, mm -hmm. and so we're saying that, but, but it's, it's not, it, if people have different perceptions of consciousness, and, and, and you're eliminating the ones that are wrong, so there are, there are some that are right that are different, uh, even though you, when you oh. eliminate the wrong, you, you have some left that are, that are real, a, a veridical interpretation aspects of consciousness. So if you have these different states of, of consciousness, uh, including par parapsychology, what does that say about the, the, uh, the essence of what generates that these are reflections of? There's some unity. I mean, because if you go all the way down, it, you can't have different facets of consciousness, you know, being, being permanently separate. Yeah. So, so there has to be some unity at some level. What I would say is that it tells us that we have plurality of different ways of apprehending reality, that we never can know the vastness of it all. I think there is a very good uh, argument to be made that being immersed in the world, there is no possible way that you could know what it is about unless you were God, godlike, a goddess, at which point we are in a completely different realm. <laughs> and we are perhaps in the, in the presence of a being that has no sense of time, no sense of space, and is everywhere all the time, inconceivable. 